Tea Time with Jen. Alright, welcome once more today. I hope you guys had a great this weekend. This topic is going to be going to church to party. Hmm. Okay. Now, this topic is just to get everybody thinking. Alright. It's not to judge or criticize or nothing like that, but we just want people to really think. That way we can evaluate ourselves and get better. Okay. So, the first question I'm going to throw out there is, why do we go to church? What's the purpose of going to church? Well, to me, well, we all go to church, and sometimes some of us go to church for the music, the preaching, the dance, um, to fellowship with everybody. So to me personally, I believe I go to church because I want to fellowship with everybody to listen to the word of God and also like, I mean, uh, the music, you mm -hmm. know, I, I like to sing and to have everybody on the choir together and we can lift the name of God mm -hmm. higher. Mm -hmm. So I believe that is why I go to church. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I would say the same thing, mm -hmm. pretty much the fellowship. Um, you know, pretty much, because sometimes too, it becomes a tradition, right. you know, especially when you, you know, we've been brought up to that the same, you right. know, like, okay, Sunday has to right. church. But I think at everyone's life, at a certain point, it becomes a personal relationship with God where, you know, you kind of find the reason why, especially when you walk away from home. Mm -hmm. You're not at home anymore. Your mom is not telling you, okay, today's Sunday, you know, at this time you have to go to church. <laughs> right. But, you know, now you're on your own. Right. So you have to find a reason and you it has to be bigger and deeper for you to even, you know, be consistent with the church. So I would say pretty much like fellowshipping, um, instead of music, worship and praise God in the presence, you know, with the midst of everyone else. Yeah. The same people that have the same beliefs as you. Right. Mm -hmm. so. And I also want to add, I agree with what you're saying, but I also want to add that we also go to church to also learn, to grow. You know, because mm -hmm. um, there's always someone who has more knowledge because you know one, like the Bible says, once you were babies, and then it gets to a point where you have to start chewing bones. Right. You know, you start more chewing in Christ. Mm -hmm. So we, that means that as Christians, we constantly have to be growing, mm -hmm. gaining more knowledge of God, of who He is. And I feel like at church, you are exposed to more people who love God, more people who want to know more about God, and you can learn from them. But sometimes you can read the Bible at home and not understand mm -hmm. what it says. But during the, like your Bible studies, or the, when the pastor is preaching, he may go over the scripture, or you may even ask, and then get better understanding of what you read. So that's why I feel like it's good too, mm -hmm. and also building our relationship with God, because I feel like when you are alone, yeah, you can, you know, get close to God, but I feel like there's power when in fellowship. Yeah, like what you ladies are saying, like there's power in that. Where I, like. You see the work of God in other people's lives also. Mm -hmm. And it strengthens your own faith. Right. You know, like if I'm going through something, the fact that I'm able to go to church and observe, I'm like, wow, she's going through something similar, but God took her out of it. Right. Testimonies. Yeah, the testimonies, yeah. So I'm like, yeah, that's the purpose of why we go. And like Quinta also said, it's also how we grew up, all of us. <laughs> hey, go to church, church, go to church. church. I'm proud of you. Yeah. You know? The next question so, is, yeah. Is the purpose of church, or the main purpose of church, to sing, dance, and show off our attire, or to date? Hmm. <laughs> that is a very, very, very interesting question. You know, it's it's making me think right now. Um, <laughs> basically, like, what is the purpose? Hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's really think about this. It's really deep. Because we listed all these things before, which is what we should go to church to do. Right. But if we really look at our current dispensation, when we go to church, is that really what the majority go to do? The answer can be yes and no. Depending because I believe that everybody has a different mindset mm -hmm. of things like my mindset will not be the same as you right. have your mindset Like you said when we we're talking we were more talking about the singing mm -hmm. uh, word, And you make us understand that you know, we also go to grow mm -hmm. to learn something, you know um, So with 
the question is the purpose. Mm -hmm. Going to church to sing, dance. Yes. I mean, I, it can be my because I love to sing. Right. I love to sing, so yep. that can be another purpose like mm -hmm. I have is to go to join the choir to sing yeah. glorify God. To nurture your time. You know, that's a lot of time that uh, given to right, it. Right, but then when it comes to showing off your attire and today, mm -hmm. that is where I feel like, huh. Because I've never heard a term someone say if you're looking for a good girl, a good guy, go, go to, to church. church. I've heard it. Be careful of that. That's not true. <laughs> that is not true, honey. <laughs> Uh, that's not true. Going home with <laughs> yes. you know what? <laughs> they don't want somebody goes to church. Just because they don't mean church. they know Christ. Right. Yes. There's a difference between someone going to true. church and having a relationship with God. Yeah. And there's a difference between somebody knowing Christ and somebody fearing God. Mm. Exactly. Mm. And loving God. So you wow. gotta be really be able to like differentiate between that. And I wanna share a story with y'all. And this is what inspired this question. <laughs> so this was something I personally experienced. Now, like I said, I've been very involved in the church for my, almost all my life. Oh, yeah, all my life. And um, I've never really experienced this until recently. Um, oh, okay. <laughs> so this happened when um, the church, you know how we always go for those like outreach, uh, like or conventions yes. and all those stuff. So he went to one of those and um, it was just so powerful. Oh my goodness. That day when we were fellowshipping together, it was amazing. Everybody was like united. We were all like worshiping together, praising God together. It was amazing. That same night after the service was over, we all, you know, we stay in the hotel, so we all go to our various rooms. Um, because I'm one of the leaders, um, in the church, I was called that there was something going on, so I should go and check, you know, resolve the issue. So I went up there, and I saw these uh, group of men, well, some were young, like different ages, arguing and like yelling at one of the employees at the hotel. Mm -hmm. So. The uh, lady was asking me, "Is are those members of our church?" And because of their behavior, I was like, "No, I don't. I don't know these people." You know, and the truth, because you know, in during conventions, there are different people from different assemblies. Mm -hmm. So I didn't know them. So I, I didn't. I couldn't confirm whether they were part of, you know, the youth. So when she asked me, I was like, "No, because we just came from this powerful, you know, uh, service." So I couldn't imagine that with the way they were behaving and acting that they were part of the church. When she asked, like, no, I don't think they're part of us. And the, the oldest among them was like, um, he looked like he was about in like his early 30s. He was like, or late 20s. He was like, yes, we are part of this church. When I joined this church, you weren't even here yet. So I was like, okay, so he's part of the apostolic. And he was like, yeah, we just came from the, you know, the fellowship. And I was asking them because the whole issue was they were making a lot of noise and it was disturbing the people in the next rooms. Mm -hmm. And um, when, because of the complaint, the uh, hotel employees had to go up there and tell them to keep it down. And they were getting upset at the hotel employees and literally like cursing them out. Oh, wow. Hmm. So I tried to resolve, like, you know, be the mediator. And that guy was getting angry at me. Giving me an attitude and it started like he was being so rude. Like he wasn't, he was so rude, it would be like he wasn't acting like someone with the spirit of God in him. Mm. Let me just put it that way. Or someone who just came from church. You would think he was someone that you met at a club who's about to like break a bottle over your head or something like that. Like that's a type of, <laughs> you know, behavior he had. Like he was very aggressive, like getting all in my face. Like, you, you know, and I was trying to explain to him, like, you know, their complaints already um, due to the past uh, uh, complaints, we're not allowed in so many hotels because of this type of behavior. So that's why, you know, we got to keep it down. We're constantly telling you guys to keep it down. And the guys went off where we have to go back and call other leaders to come in and try to, like, tone the situation down. Long story short, we're not allowed back in that hotel anymore. And they're none of their um, branches either. Wow. So with this type of behaviors, I'm like, we were all down there jumping, worshiping, praising God together. Hey, hey, hey. 
you left church and then you act like this, which makes me like try to wonder what was your purpose of going? Mm -hmm. Was it just for the music, the dancing? Because because clearly you didn't take any message from what was going on. Because for you to act like that and treat another human being that was just a lady who's older than you disrespectfully. That that kind of took me back where I was like, not everybody who goes to church is going there with the same, yeah. Some people have different yeah. motives, yeah. Right. different mindsets. Mm -hmm. So we should not be deceived into thinking that, oh, oh man. yeah. Mm -hmm. I need church. Yeah. That and can I be a good has to do with tradition. Most of the times, people who grow up in church or have always been in church, they really do not seek that one-on-one -on -one focus with God mm -hmm. because they are so redundant to the tradition. Right. You know, you you just know that you go to church, you play this role, you know, whichever, you know, department that you ask, whether you're in the music department or, you know, mm -hmm. whichever. And so you grow up with the same people, you mm -hmm. know, you the same cafe ash, like it's, it's just the same people that you see. So and I'm going to shock you. Have any different. So right. you lose that side of really seeking God for yourself. Yeah, for, for yourself. Right. As compared to, you know, well, it's what I do. Right. So. Because this person turn, come to find out after everything was set up, was turned out to have one of the leaders. <laughs> yeah. Oh, they one of the leaders for his own assemblies. I'm like, what? Yeah, most of so the you, you're, you're, you know where you're right. It is that way. Because you and that's sad. Yeah. Because you haven't really because it is a difference and you see the difference in people when they have that one-on-one -on -one relationship as compared to people that it is a tradition right you know you see that you i mean their perception is different you know their way of leadership is different yeah you know it's not just okay this is what we do mm -hmm. you know i mean i could still party i could still go to the club I could <laughs> and then all of on Sunday, and then then you go to church. Back to church i could you know because hey that's what we do on sunday yeah. You know, on Saturday, that's what we do. We go to the club on Sunday. We go and that's to church. sad. Yeah, but unfortunately, you know, church is made out of people in mm. the building. So mm. you have all these people in the church. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just hmm. yeah. And I was just gonna say, wow, it's really sick to know that actually this person is also a leader from another assembly that's really like so now it's like okay what is going on you know and i believe like how as you were saying um sometimes some of us our parents depending what your dad is a bishop or something mm -hmm. in the church the position you know they own in the church you grow up where it's like okay you don't seek god for yourself you kind of walk in their shoes they're telling you okay sunday you do this you pray you do this you know so it's kind of like you have instruction or something to follow mm -hmm. you know so you don't get your own time to say okay let me sit down mm -hmm. let me examine myself and find out who this you know the mind together they are talking about mm -hmm. is so then when you get the little children, because I believe in everybody, all of us, we have different side of ours, mm -hmm. you know? So then when people like that, they don't get that chance and they get the freedom, everything becomes chaos. Well, I'm gonna do what? I feel like I, I wanted want to, to do because I never got to do it because my family will always on my neck like go to church, go to church. Uh, be part. Even yeah. sometimes they give positions to people that they didn't even pray to see God guide, but because the dad was this and that, they feel like, okay, if your dad was that and your dad was good, let us give you this position. We know that God, no. So then if that person becomes a leader, out of no, because the dad was something, so because of that, you're giving it to the person, look at the situation you can have. The person is not prepared for it. And I believe that, you know, we shouldn't give those kind of stuff or go to church because, you know, everybody's mm -hmm. mind is different. Right. Look for a woman. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> some people, um, so, some people, church. <laughs> some people they can You will have one guy, and I personally <laughs> witnessed this, who would date like two or three different girls in the church. And like who did this person didn't work out, they who did another person within the church didn't work out, didn't and if it, it creates so much tension within the church, it creates it brings a lot of confusion. And before you know it, there's a lot of animosity in the church instead of love. Right. Instead of there being peace and church. unity, this person don't get along with this person, this person don't talk to this person, 
because of these type of things. So I feel like churches really need to educate. Yes, more. Have one of those like relationship, um, get together seminars and stuff. Really like educate the youth about these type of things. Yeah. You know, like, cause it really messes with the church. And then you have some people like, I'm just going, I'm trying to follow your girl, man. <laughs> I'm just trying to be like, God, like I'm going to be careful. You might just bring the devil home. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny you. how people, yeah. you know, how people just think that I'm um, going to the church. We're not saying that you won't find good guys. You will at the church. That God will. will lead you to. Right. We're not saying that, but the that thing is, every, people are now saying like, if you want a great woman, if you want that great guy that you be praying for, go to church. But forgetting that also church is the same place that people who are sick we go there and we pretend that we are not sick. That's the one thing a great man said. Um, but it's so funny we pretend that we are not sick. We don't need healing. But then we do, because the church is the place, because everything is so secret, like, we secret, hide yeah. things. So if this guy comes to talk to me, especially women, if this guy comes to talk to me and I like the guy, I kind of try to, you know, just leave it, because hmm, I like this guy, you know? I won't tell my friend about oh, the guy, yeah. you know? I won't tell my friend, you see, that is one thing that is... And that you have one guy trying to date. <laughs> yeah. That is one thing that is killing the church and women in the church oh, and men yeah. in the church now. Yeah. And we don't know, and the church is going that bad because we don't talk about it because we want to keep the man. Mm -hmm. You know, but not knowing if I talk to, oh, okay, hey, sis, um, I'm talking to this guy. Mm -hmm. This is what he said. And then maybe she will also bring, what? You think this guy is trying to talk to me? Yeah. But because we like the guy, and the guy will come tell you, oh, you know, this girl really likes me and blah, blah, blah. So you will intend to hate that girl and not try to talk to the girl to also find out what What's is going, going on. on. So then everything becomes you're crashing, you're not liking each other. Yeah. You are there's just, no communication. Right, you love my man. But I'm telling you people out there, young women, young ladies, this is the time, okay? If you have a friend, you don't know the guy, you guys have been together. Don't let somebody come break your friendship that you have built for years. Talk to each other. It's time for us to do that communication. Let them know. And if your friend told you, look, this guy is trying to talk to me, don't go all crazy. Know how to handle setting things right but I'm gonna put this out there we in Princeton experience one guy try to talk to both of us <laughs> okay so wrap your mind around us like girls we don't talk to each other right you know so be very very careful and if you're if you're dating a guy from a church and he's like oh let's keep it secret mm. no when you're dating someone let me tell you involve your parents Yes. Before you even date that person, take it before your parents, like, oh, mom or dad, or if your uncle and auntie is your uh, guardian, put it before whoever is, you know, oh, your guardian, take it before that person and say, mom and dad, this guy, or, you know, I'm interested in this girl, I'm inter I want to date them and get the family involved in you guys' court. Don't do that secret dating thing because I'm telling you, you will get screwed over. There are guys who will promise you marriage in the church, okay? They'll say, oh... I love you. <laughs> the Lord <laughs> show me marry you. <laughs> that you are the woman for me. I, I want to marry you. And he's telling three other girls the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> Be careful, okay? I've experienced this way too many times. So be very careful. Everybody, my friends, they are talking about women a lot. I mean, but also, you know, men being this and that, but women also yeah, do women it, okay? Yeah. Some women also will play <laughs> a guy that, hey, you know, oh, I love you. You're the only guy that I cannot live without you. But at the end of the day, they are seeing another man right. somewhere that when you call them, they don't want to pick up their phones. But as a woman, so, I can only speak from my experience. <laughs> <laughs> you see women, we just right. talking for no. ourselves. I, I know, but like from my experience. You from the guy. Right. right. That is true. Unless right. a guy was here. Mm -hmm. Right. You know what I mean? It's their experience, but right. I am talking for you guys out there too. <laughs> and I'm also talking for the women, okay? Okay. Yeah. But yeah, these things happen where I feel like communication is the key. That's why these seminars are so important. Awesome. It gets very, you to open very, up very, things very, that you are struggling with, you're yes. confused about. Yes. You bring it out, and then you have the elders. Because sometimes the elders, you know, the mommies, the deacons, they've been through all that. They were once young. young. 
you know, they've been through that the way they can even share certain experiences that will give you wisdom and yeah. knowledge. So yeah, and I think that really has to start from educating people about self, about themselves, yes. you know, to value themselves. Yes, you know, yes. You have to, because sometimes when you do know what you carry, your value, you don't have time mm -hmm. to be doing all the run around, right. to be listening to this, say that, say all, oh, you know, let's do this underground, low key kind of, oh, what? Mm -hmm. Did you low key? No. Why? No, guys, you want to hide you. You Why? have two people in the church you dating. And then it's like you're trying to hide it, but of course yeah. you know, people talk, so you will know about it, but no one will say anything. Like, don't, I'm telling you, don't allow anyone to deceive you, oh, let's date in secret, at the right time, we'll get married. No, if someone is proud of you, mm -hmm. if you like a treasure, they will want to show you up. Right. They will want to introduce you to their family. Exactly. Yes. You know what I mean? Get the family involved. If it's involved. not the right time, then don't date. If it's not the right you're time, not prepared that is emotionally, okay, let's be friends. Mm -hmm. When you are ready, then, you know, let's Virtually, <laughs> don't. if you're not ready, don't. But if you do ready, get the parents involved. Because I've learned, I've right. learned, when the parents are involved, it's hard for that kind of, because, you know, I mean, the girl, know. yeah, like when parents are involved, it's like, it's, it's harder more, to mess around in yeah, sense. It's, it's right. more, like you're more serious. Yeah, it's so more serious. So before you also introduce someone to your parents, you also have to make sure that, yeah. you know, yeah. this is the, you know, like, you're really 100% certain about the person. Don't just bring anyone home. Mm. Right. Before you know, you're bringing five people. <laughs> <laughs> your mom and dad are like, hey, what happened? My daughter, sit down, sit down. <laughs> Enough. What happened to this one? The last time you brought Kojo, now Kwesi, now yeah. Eh? Eh? Oh, why? Come on, Kwaku. All them cakes. Kwame, Kabuna. Eh? You're right. All the cakes. Where did all the cakes? Alright. So what about the attire? Dressing? Going? That goes for both men and women. Coming to church just look B. I'll be honest, okay? Yeah. <laughs> Before I look, you guys, due to my, apart from school, work, and church, I didn't go anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> and because of that, whenever I shop, I went shopping, the, most, the main place I'm wearing that dress to, unless I had a wedding to attend, a baby shower, or someone's having a barbecue or something, I'm not going anywhere. That's the only place I could wear it to was church. So I made sure I dress, I look nice, and I went to church, you know, because I, I like to dress nice, I like to look good, right? However, my family started this uh, thing where sometimes they were fellowship at home. And my mom was like, well, you know, they'll pray, do worship, like the whole service at home where they can have one-on-one -on -one time with God. And they had this thing where everybody had to dress up. Like you have, like the way you would dress and go to church, you had to do the same thing. You know, we're at home, we're not really going out to church. church. We're having church at home. Everybody had to dress and look presentable, like put on your best attire. And we all sit in the living room together and we'll fellowship together. And that got me really thinking like, are we dressing up for God or are we dressing up just to look good before men or women, you know, just to look good for people? Let me just put it that way. And that's what I want to ask you ladies. Like, what do you think? Because for me, I want to look, yes, <laughs> you know what I mean? But it really got me thinking like, what is your motive when you dress up, when you put on all that pancake? On your face, the and hair, you go out. You do your yeah, hair. Yeah, the hair. The hair. You make sure that. You know, right. I mean, what is the motive behind it? Are you doing it for God? Am I looking good for God? You know what I mean? Am I presenting? I want to. Do I want to present my the best I have to God, or is it before people? Because that really threw me back when my friends started doing that. I was like, Why do we have to do that? My mom was like, no, if we're going to fellowship with God, we have to present our best. You're going before the king. You can't go anywhere just looking at, we might, yeah, we're fellowshipping at home, right. but we all have to look our best before God. Because mm -hmm. you can't go before a king looking any That is house. true. Your mom, I believe. If you're going to do it to yeah. church, you got to do yeah. it here, like anywhere. And that true. got me thinking. Yeah. yeah. I think, you know, that actually 
what you said actually really does make sense and it brought me to a place where I'll share that later mm -hmm. but I think that has to do with modesty right that has to be you know do with intention you know how do you want to present yourself you know are you yeah people like to look good you know mm -hmm. however whenever you know but at the same time how are you looking good you know mm -hmm. will also tell why you're looking right. that way you know and just to share something and the this is like way back probably, probably around four years ago and you know this is the time when i started really like you know my journey one-on-one -on -one with god and i really you know was allowing him to really like take me through the process of you know unfolding himself to right me. and i remember one time and you know i love looking yes i, I love <laughs> looking fly <laughs> I was getting a visitor coming to the house mm -hmm. and you know I, I was you know in sweatpants whatever you know, stuff so I was gonna just you know get ready real quick and this is a visitor you know a brother from church you know was gonna come pay a visit mm -hmm. so and I was looking through you know just like grabbing stuff to put on mm -hmm. and I pulled on you know the sweatpants that is really voluptuous <laughs> <laughs> and for, you know like I, for a second I held that and I went this will not show a good image. Mm. This is not modest. Mm -hmm. And this will show a different. a different kind of image. It will tell something different. Mm -hmm. It will send a different message, mm. which that's not what I want. You know, so I had to put that down and pick up something very relaxed, big and comfortable. And I put that on. And at the end of the day, you know, it's just one of those things that even though sometimes you kind of want to you know maybe even if you like somebody or you know but at the same time it's that mindset of saying that you know what i want everything to be divinely appointed right i do not want to stand before you know before god or just try to help him in my own way mm -hmm. because at the end of the day whatever you put forward might not be what god wants for you so you might instead put yourself in a situation where it's gonna take you way back. So, you know, it's just one of those things where it has to do with the person's inner self. Right. It has to do with your conscience. It has to do with modesty and with your relationship with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm adding to what um, our dear Quinta said. How are you gonna go to church putting on a clothes that is showing your boobs? It's showing, you know, your mm -hmm. tie, your leg. It's like even when you, <laughs> <laughs> what is your that is where I believe it comes in like what is your motive like you said if somebody is coming to visit you let me put it out that I mean I'm being for real okay mm -hmm. let's say you're dating a guy okay mm -hmm. and you know that your man is coming to visit you you know what he likes because maybe you've been talking to him for a while to get his attention there are certain things you put on because you know that who once he says this is like wow He's going to go all the way. So it's like going to church. So then if you go there and you are going there to worship God, God doesn't really mind how you dress. But then you cannot just dress showing your boobs and you're going to put some people into, you know, into temptation, into mm -hmm. trouble. You know, so that is where the problems kind of like come out when you're going to church. You have to be somebody who is so modest, you know, dress decent, nice, go. And I mean, if you have a good mind not to go, because even in church, you attract the bad guys by your dressing. Because trust me, if you go there, show your boots. Let me come in real quick. <laughs> you can go to church wearing a sack cloth, okay? <laughs> you can go to church. I mean, all y'all saying is right, but I just want to come in with this. If a guy's attracted to you, he's attracted, attracted to, to you. Right. Period. Okay, you can yes, come you can. looking like bologna sandwich wrapped in lettuce. <laughs> if he's a child, he's a child, he's gonna come after you. It's all about that discernment mm. and that wisdom. You could be modest. There are, some, there are women out there who are modest, but they still, you know, guys will come after them. Sometimes good guys will come, sometimes bad guys will come. You know what I mean? Like, Quinta, you were talking about how, you know, you wore something modest, something comfortable. Shoot, that might be what that guy likes. <laughs> tight clothes with boobs out he maybe because there's some people who find modesty very attractive 
That's true. Right. So you people got some if people got different tastes. Right. But then again, you know, it has to do with that inner conscience. It right. has, you know, like because sometimes I believe that when we do things that are wrong, our conscience do tell exactly. us. Exactly. So you're doing things and your mind you be like, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> you know what you're doing. It's yeah. not like you don't know you what know you're doing. But then you have to want. counteract that in your mind and say, you know what? I actually want to present this. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna do this, even though, you know, my mind and my head is going spinning mm -hmm. and stuff. Mm -hmm. But 